Okay, welcome to the flipped video on enthalpy of combustion. And here we're going to be doing, like always, comparing the basic sort of levels of what you need to know. And then we can amp it up a little bit in other videos. But please make sure that you check your particular syllabus to ensure that what we're saying here is relevant to you. So enthalpy of combustion. Enthalpy is the heat content contained within a molecule. And we can release that heat content by combusting it. And the definition is the energy release when one mole of a compound is burnt in excess oxygen under standard conditions. And what do we mean by standard conditions? Well, we mean one atmosphere pressure, okay, and we need 298 Kelvin, okay? So that's standard conditions, and normally this is done and measured precisely in a bomb calorimeter, but in the lab we don't have access to that. So we just do it the simple way, where we try to burn a certain amount of fuel in a spirit burner that heats up some water, and then we measure the temperature change. And that understanding is that the energy lost by the fuel is equal to the energy gained by the water, assuming minimal energy loss. So this is what we do. So in the lab, we have a retort stand. Okay, that's a very basic diagram of what we do in the lab. So we have a retort stand, we have a spirit burner, and in that spirit burner we have a particular fuel, and then we uh, burn that fuel and we heat up some water. Sometimes in a conical flask, sometimes a beaker, sometimes an aluminium can, a copper can. There's lots of different materials. But in this particular example we're looking at a conical flask. And we want to in measure the heat absorbed by the water, and we're saying that the heat lost by the flame is equal to the heat gained by the water. And so experimentally, we will try and do as much as we can to minimize heat loss. So the key ideas here, the key ideas for the enthalpy of combustion is, number one, is that it, combustion is an exothermic process. Okay, and so therefore, being exothermic, being exothermic, the delta... Um, enthalpy change is negative in value, okay? And if you uh, remember what's actually going on here, it's negative even though the temperature goes up. Because if you remember, we have what's called the system, and in the surroundings is everything else. So the water, the thermometer, the conical flask. The system is actually what chemical change is occurring. And so in this, in this case, it's going to be um, the absorption of the heat by the water which we're assuming is the same as the combustion of the fuel. So what's actually happening here is the system is losing heat, right? So the combustion of the fuel here is losing heat <clears throat> and it's being gained by the surroundings and the surroundings is the water and the thermometer. And so therefore the temperature is going to go up in the surroundings, but it's going to go down in the system. And so the combustion of the fuel is negative because it's lost energy but the actual thermometer reading goes up because it's gained energy, right? Whatever's lost is equal to whatever's gained by the surroundings. So that's the first key idea there, that exothermic is negative. The second key idea is that we're burning alkenes, sorry, alkanes, and when we burn alkanes, we're going to um, hopefully get complete combustion. And with complete combustion, you perform two products, carbon dioxide and water. So they're the key fundamental ideas. Let's rub this off in a sec. You guys are going to copy down, I guess, a typical example how we calculate the enthalpy of combustion. So let's get started. All right, let's get to a specific example and do some calculations. So here we have the setup in the lab. We've got a conical flask with 200 mils of water into which we have a thermometer. And then we have a spirit burner down the bottom with ethanol in it. And under these circumstances, if we write down the data of what you might have observed in the lab, so you might say, okay, well, the initial mass, you might record the mass of the spirit burner containing the fuel on electronic balance. And let's say you've got an initial mass of 37.25 grams. And let's say that you uh, measured the temperature of your thermometer. So let's just write that in, temperature of the thermometer. Initial temperature of the thermometer was 20 degrees. And then you burn it for a while, okay? You burn it, you chat with your friends about chemistry because you love it so much. And then after a while, you then do some more measurements and say, okay, well, let's measure it now. We've got the final, um, let's stop it, blow it out. 
we want to measure the final temperature and that was 75 degrees so the temperature went up and then you take your spirit burner back to your electronic balance and you might and you work out the final mass and that was 35.50 grams okay so then you go all right let's do some calculations so we've got to work out the change in temperature so the change in temperature there is 55 degrees and then you work out the change in mass hopefully that's not cut out but the change in mass or I should say the mass used right is 1.75 grams all right now we're going to balance it so two carbons one carbon so let's put a two there then we've got five six oxygens we've only got two over here so let's put a three and then we now count the oxygens left so we've got two twos of four five six seven and we've got two and one is three so we need to have seven over here so if we go two times three which is six plus one is seven so there is our balanced equation and now we've got to work out the enthalpy of combustion and so we need to use some formulas here so the equations we're going to be using is delta hc is equal to m c cat then we've also got q is equal to m c cat so q is just the quantity of heat gained and of course if that is burning one mole then it's the same as enthalpy of combustion well here we're probably not going to have one mole so we're going to use this equation here to represent the heat lost or heat gained okay so let's throw some values in there the mass that we're talking about is the mass of water so it's 200 then the specific heat capacity of water which is 4.18 now the value you use here will depend upon the units of um, the other values I'm using grams here so this is 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin if you're using kilograms you've got to, you've got to convert that to liters but I'm using grams so let's just uh, keep it like that and we had a temperature change as 55 so you throw that in your calculator and you should end up with four five whoops yeah four five nine eight zero joules okay so 45,980 joules. Now, enthalpy of combustion is in kilojoules, so we're going to divide that by 1,000. So we get 45.98 kilojoules. Now, what you've got to remember is that's kilojoules per the amount of fuel that you burnt. So we burnt 175 grams. So that's per one, sorry, 1.75 grams, right? And we want it per mole. So what we're going to do is work this value out per mole. Now there's two ways we can do this. And we'll do both and then you choose which one makes sense to you. So first of all, let's find out how many moles that is, 1.75. So let's take that over here. And we know our relationship is moles is equal to mass divided by molecular mass. And so the mass that we used is 1.75 grams. The molecular mass of ethanol is 46.1 and so we ended up with 0 0.0380 moles so if we write that again 45.98 kilojoules per and now moles 0 0.0380 moles we'll remember this is stated as per mole so if we want that as per mole we've got to divide both sides by how many moles we've got so therefore, the enthalpy of combustion that we've calculated, and remember, enthalpy is negative, we have, we have, combustion is negative, so we can put a minus there, then it's that divided by the number of moles, which turns out to be um, 1, 2, 1, 0 kilojoules, and that divided by itself is just 1, so it's per mole. So that is our answer. 1,210 kilojoules per mole from our experimental calculations. So what's the second way in which you can do this? Well, let's have a look. If we get this value here, well actually, we're going to be using kilojoules, so we, we've got to make sure uh, we do the kilojoule value. So we're not getting the joule value. And then there's a relationship here, which we've uh, probably, you might have encountered before, is delta H is equal to minus Q over N. Which makes sense, because if we're talking about Q as the heat released, 
or absorbed. And we said that this is per mole. Well, when n is equal to one mole, then those two values equal each other. So we can use this relationship here and we can go, okay, well, our Q value was this here, 45, so it's minus 45.98, divided by the number of moles that we use. Well, the number of moles we use was over here, 0 0.0380. And notice that that is exactly the calculation we're doing anyway, right there. And so we end up with the same value, minus 1210 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's how you do enthalpy of combustion calculations. Take it stepwise, write the equation out, collect your data, plug it into the equation, and everything should work out. Now, so make sure you watch out the videos on frequently asked questions of enthalpy of combustion because they can be tricky in the exams. Sometimes they're not as straightforward as this. They can ask you the mass that you need to burn to get a certain value. They might say, okay, assuming you have 50% heat loss, what is the value that you might get, etc., etc. All right, the tricksters in exam exams like to see if your brain cells are working. So anyway, hope that makes sense. See you